I don't know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a, a video game tester. <laughs> I wanted to be one of those guys writing the, about the games in the magazines. Remember when there was all these magazines about video games? That was my dream job when I was a kid. But it's an interesting question to ask at this point of my life. Hey everybody, Mark Ahrensberg here with The Pure Now Show. This is episode number 29. My guest today is Gabriel Rocha. Gabriel is a motion designer with over 15 years experience. He's originally from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, picked up his family and moved to the UK and has been working for Tendril Studio there in Canada for almost nine years. Here we go. Hey Gabriel, good morning. Well, good morning for me and your you're where? I'm in Toronto, uh, Canada. It's oh, uh, eight, eight, 8 p.m. here. Okay, so uh, you're looking at uh, 13 hours difference. So you're wow. going into the evening, your day is over. Uh, how was your work day? Today was pretty relaxed. Not very often that that happens, but it was pretty relaxed. Well, listen, I really appreciate you being on the Pure Now Show. It's great to have you on and uh, happy to uh, hear all the things you got going on. We can start with the fact that you're actually from Rio de Janeiro, correct? Exactly, yeah. I'm from Rio, Brazil. I moved to Canada about uh, five years and a half ago, and I moved straight to Tendro. That must have been extreme culture shock from you going from Brazil to Toronto, Canada, it's kind of like day and night, I would imagine for you. How, how'd you make that adjustment? Uh, it, it, it's very different, but uh, it wasn't a, a huge shock for me because I had like experience with North America, like uh, my sister lives in US, which is not exactly Canada, of course not, but you know, there is a lot of North American culture and a lot of, a lot of things are similar. I, I lived a year with her when I was, I don't know, 19 years old. It was an awesome experience. It makes it made it made my English bloom, got really better. So when I came here, before I moved here, I came to Canada three or four times, mostly for work. Only once was just like for vacations to get to know the city, because I already had a lot of a lot of friends working here. So I came here to get to know the city, to visit these friends, and I loved it. it was an awesome experience. And since then, I kept in touch with several studios from Toronto. I kept working for them as freelancers until I, I was hired by Tendro and I started working with them. So moving here wasn't a big hustle. It was the only shock was like a family life here was is very different because all the times that I visit Canada before, I came by myself almost like a single, single guy life, you know? So when I came here with the family, it's like a very different, you know, kind of uh, lifestyle, which is good. Like I like the lifestyle here. If I didn't, I definitely wouldn't stay here because if you have to. Let's hear about the dream job. The job that comes in, everything's going great. You guys are super stoked with the end result. The clients, you know, thrilled with the, uh, the product that you delivered. And uh, maybe this is your flagship project or something that you can say is the epitome of why you're doing what you're doing. I would say we, we've been getting a lot of dream jobs and I'm very lucky to be where I am at Tendril right now because I'm, I'm being able to enjoy this kind of um, moment, you know, where we are getting, as I was mentioning, we are getting so close to, to the clients. And even when it's not just like an old client, we learn to collaborate really well. And this is really reflecting in our results. Uh, Hublot is, is a client where you can clearly see we have a lot of some, we have already some videos with them, some uh, some projects with them, and you can clearly see that you know they all come come out really well. The client super pleased, and we have such an amazing relationship with them. Microsoft as well. There was so many good stuff that we've done with them. They you know I wasn't part of this start of relationship because when I come back here to Canada, I wasn't a, a director. But, you know, but I was in contact with the directors and you, I got to see things progressing and moving forward. And I, I can easily say that we are 
like we get a lot of dream jobs very frequently, very frequently at Dendro. But it was a, a construction. It wasn't always like that. That right? Like we did a lot of job, a lot of projects with like low budgets, where like we knew we wouldn't make a dime, and but we, you know, we need to get. You need to get known by the industry. You need to get, you know, get to know the right clients, the right agencies, and it was just the right project. You know, it was just the right project. So I think that th this kind of attitude in the beginning, like, put us, put us where we are right now. Like to be coll coll collaborative, and no matter if, like, the penny, no matter the budget back then, but we just needed to make something beautiful. We just made, wanted to communicate well and to you know deliver something where everybody would be pleased, us and the client. And things progressed really well in that sense, for sure. So did you draw as a child? Was any of that part of you growing up? Or did, did you just kind of bypass that whole thing and then at one point just hit the digital world pretty hard? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I drew a lot when I was a child, a lot, a lot, especially like in the influence of video games and, you know, cartoons like uh, comics. I remember having like this big collection of drawings and, and there was this point in my life where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I want to go, you know, right before uh, college and etc. Like I, I had no idea what to do with my life. I didn't discover that graphic design was a thing. You know, I loved it, but I didn't know what was it. I had all these drawings and I thought I threw it away. And one day my mother came to me with like this big bin with like all of my drawings. And it was like a, such an awesome uh, surprise, you know? I, I had already moved away from Brazil. I was here already in Canada. So I went back there and I was looking for a no document for me because you know, when you immigrate, you always need a bunch of documents to you know, restart your life. So I, I told her like, where are my, all, all my old documents? Those, those, that, those ones that you'll probably never need again. I was like, oh, it's in this bin back there. Just check it, check there. And I was checking, I saw all these cartoons and, and, and drawings, but uh, it's a shame that I didn't keep drawing uh, on my adult life. I know in this industry, people log a lot of hours. Give me an idea of how you have uh, created some balance in your life, as well as the culture at Tendril, that it's kind of, is it a people first? How do you make sure you're getting what you need so you have time with your family, you have time for yourself. What's what's kind of the strategy or your practice? It's funny because I had a little bit of con uh, thought about that maybe a, a year ago. I think I even posted something on LinkedIn about, about that. Is that I think in general, the industry matured a lot in that sense. You know, like I don't see much people like pulling all-nighters that frequently anymore. I don't see, I remember going to this is perfect. I remember going to um, conferences in the early, I don't know, 2010, 2011, uh, even a little bit. And people were always bragging that, you know, like to deliver this project, you know, they would punch their chest to deliver this project. I worked all night. I didn't sleep for five days. And everybody was like, oh my God, this guy is amazing, you know? And that was a culture that was like very, Everybody, nobody wanted to go through that, but everybody expected to go through that at some point in their career. And I'm not saying that you're never gonna have to do that anymore. Uh, once in a while that happens, but I can count in, a, in one hand per year how many times I have to do that. Pulling all-nighters, it's very, 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 I'm sorry, very, very rare. But uh, back to the to my uh, my comments. Uh, and I think that the industry itself mat matured a lot. I think it's a mix of things. Motion graphics was very new. We didn't have the proper tools. Uh, even After Effects progressed a lot in a lot of ways to you know to get us to do what we want more more flex with more flexibility. C4D progressed as well a lot. Uh, we have different renders now, and you know, and I know this is this is all like technicalities because depending on the culture of the studio you're working from, you're working at. They, that might not matter, you know, they, they might have that culture, like that old kind of Steve Jobs, you know, kind of thought like, you know, if you're not working 12 hours a day, you're not, you know, you're not doing your best. And I think that kind of died in the industry. That doesn't exist anymore. I won't say, you know, for every studio, but you don't hear that very often. And Tendru culture is very centered in, in a sense where like people first, absolutely people first. But that also was a progression. That also was, you know, 
things changed through time. We were all younger. Everybody was younger at Andrew and in the industry as a whole. And that's why I say that I think the industry matured a lot because people in this industry matured. They were like, we were kind of the first, I wouldn't say the very first generation because there was motion graphics before my generation. But, you know, it wasn't that broad. Uh, it wasn't with so many people with so uh, many different styles and and the in industry grew a lot and people just got older and everybody realized well we gotta have our lives as well this can't go forever now i'm you know a founder of a studio a director would go i'm getting close to 50 years old i can't do that anymore and and i think everybody learned to you know to get things on time you know and to do your best with the time that you have with the proper tools and working remotely, I would absolutely say that that helped uh, in that sense as well. The, and there are the, the pros and cons about working remotely, right? So, but talking, but when we talk about work-life balance, my experience at the studio is that most people adapted really well and that helped. But, you know, there is always some people that struggle a little bit more because they need people around or they just need to leave, this, leave home to go to the studio and have their routine. But yeah, I, I would say that there was this, this big shift in the industry for the last 10 years.